Hi, this is Dr. Y. Would you like to learn a skill on how to become a better listener? Well, I've got a really important skill to teach you then. And this is something that I teach a lot of my clients in terms of better communication, usually with the people that they care about and the people that are important to them. This skill is called reflecting. It's a reflection communication skill. And it's something that we have to learn. Listen, good communication doesn't just happen. We learn language as an infant. As we get older, we learn sounds and symbols and what the meaning is behind all of that. But I would tell you as an adult, we're also learning those things, how to communicate better. Sounds, intention, intonation, and our meaning. All of those things are important when we're talking about communicating. One of the most important skills that I've had to learn as a clinician is how to actively listen. So actively listening to someone isn't just hearing what they say. It's actually listening for understanding. Yeah, that's the difference. I wanna hear what it is that they're trying to say in terms of what they mean and how they feel about that meaning versus just hearing the words. And a lot of times we get distracted or maybe we have an emotional reaction to what they're saying or it's triggering. There's a lot of reasons why, you know, <laughs> we have these squirrel moments and we're not really paying attention. But that's not actually what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is a precise tool called reflection that can help you become a better listener. So sometimes we get distracted or our cell phone goes off or we're looking at our phone and we're not really paying attention to what somebody else is saying. Um, this is not active listening, by the way. You might be hearing bits and pieces, but you're not really listening for understanding. And there's a difference there. So reflection can feel funny at first. You might think the other person might be annoyed for you repeating them, or maybe they're, they're going to feel you know awkward or you're not necessarily hearing them correctly. All of those things are normal. This is a skill that you're gonna to have to practice, but keep doing it because over time, the quality of your conversations and the quality of your relationships is going to improve because the person on the other side is going to see that you're really trying to understand what they're trying to say. Let me give you four quick tips on how to get this done. Number one, the tone of your voice for reflection is really super important. It's really coming across with a tone of just a little bit of a question, right? So you're gonna have a soft tone. It's a statement. You're seeking for information. You're seeking for understanding. Did I hear you correctly? It has a little bit of a question in that tone. Now, your reflection doesn't have to be perfect. What you're doing is you're seeking clarification from them. You are parroting back what they say in your own words, and you're seeking clarification from them about what they just said. Basically, did I hear you right? Is this what you were trying to say? Number two, in a reflection, you're trying to reflect back the emotion that a person is using, even if they didn't specifically talk about emotions or they didn't clearly describe an emotion. You also may be able to pick up on how they feel by the tone of their voice or by body language. This is all part of reflection. It isn't just that I said these words. It's how I said these words. Number three. So you're going to switch up your phrasing so that you're not like a robot saying the same thing over and over and over. Yes, you're right. That would be awkward. Okay. I want you to switch up your phrasing that's going to make it a little bit more flowy in your conversation. I don't know if flowy is a word. It's going to help your conversation flow a little better. Okay, so it would sound something like this. And you don't want them to sound forced or rehearsed. So in the beginning, it's going to feel awkward. But over time, it's going to become a natural way that you seek understanding from the people you're talking to. Okay, it may sound something like this. So I hear you saying that. Or, it sounds like you feel, or, so you're telling me that, or, am I understanding this correctly? Or, I, I think this is what you're trying to say. Okay, so you can come across in different ways, meaning you can use different words to reflect what the person is trying to say. And this can help you clarify what they really mean. How many times have you been in a conversation where you walked away and you thought you heard what was going on, but ultimately it wasn't at all what they were trying to say. And sometimes that happens vice versa. So push against the awkwardness of using a reflection.
just go with it. I'd love to hear how it's going for you too. Go ahead, write it down. Okay, and then the last one, number four. I want you to focus on the main point. The main point of what they're trying to communicate. So don't worry too much about all the little details and all the residual things that they had to say. I want you to take the general gist of what the speaker has told you and reflect that back. So this is what you're telling me, or you're telling me that, or I hear you saying that, or I understand that what you're saying is, okay, you're going to fill in the blank there. Changing the way that you communicate changes the quality of our relationships. Our relationships really are based on our ability to communicate. And a lot of the problems that people come into therapy with are based on communication mistakes or just not knowing. Sometimes we just don't know what we don't know, and that's okay. That's why you're listening to this video, right? If you like some of the stuff that I'm sharing in these videos, I am uploading stuff every single weekend. Subscribe to my channel for more.